Welcome to Optimizing Azure Costs. A little about me. I'm a technical trainer and developer residing in Arizona in the United States. I've been a Microsoft certified trainer for the past 18 years, providing in-house development and training on Microsoft client and server operating systems, PowerShell, and Azure deployments. If your organization is making the transition to Azure, whether as a hybrid deployment or a full deployment, or if you're currently managing an Azure deployment, managing Azure related costs is an important part of any cloud-based deployment since cost is often one of the prime reasons for moving to the cloud in the first place. Keep foremost in mind that Azure is a metered pay for what you use service. So the key to optimizing resource costs is to use what you're paying for and deallocate or delete what is not being used. This will be explained further for each type of resource. For the planning phase of an Azure deployment, Microsoft provides an excellent online tool to assist in estimating your Azure costs. This tool allows you to select and estimate the costs of deploying resources to Azure. Of course, to generate the best cost estimate, you'll need to know exactly what resources you plan to deploy to Azure and their compute and storage requirements. For example, Azure Virtual Machines are available in a range of sizes based on the number of CPU cores and memory. So if you plan to deploy IaaS Virtual Machines, you'll need to choose from these sizes based on current demands of the workloads that will be hosted on the Azure Virtual Machines and on projected growth. The bottom line is that a cost-efficient Azure deployment requires careful and extensive planning. In the case where you already have resources deployed to Azure, the first step in optimizing Azure resource costs is to analyze current Azure resource consumption in order to gain an overall understanding of the resources currently deployed to Azure and their associated costs. There are two tools that can be used for determining overall Azure costs, the Azure Billing Portal and the Azure Cost Management Tool. The Azure Billing Portal can be accessed from the Azure Portal by choosing Cost Management and Billing. The Azure Cost Management Tool is another good tool for monitoring and analyzing Azure costs. This tool can be accessed from the Cost Management and Billing Blade. Resource costs vary somewhat by region, so if possible, create your resources in a region with lower costs. Ideally, you should place your resources close to the geographical location of your consumers of those resources. Nonetheless, you may find a nearby region that offers the same resources for less. Use the pricing calculator to assist in finding the lower cost regions. In this example, note the difference in cost between West US and West US 2. Also note the significant difference in cost savings in using one year and three year reserve plans. If your Azure deployment consists of IAS virtual machines, there are several ways to manage and even reduce the costs associated with Azure virtual machines. Azure virtual machines use three primary resources, CPU cores, memory, and storage for the virtual hard drives. Azure networking costs are strictly limited to egress or outbound bandwidth. All incoming data to Azure data centers is free, while the cost of outgoing data begins after the first five gigabytes per month, and it's tiered based on usage. The cost for outbound data up to 10 terabytes is 8.7 cents per gigabyte after the first five. Azure storage is billed on a per gigabyte per month basis. Therefore, your strategy for reducing or at least controlling Azure storage costs is to ensure that what is being stored in your storage account is being used. If you are using Azure to host IaaS virtual machines, you know that you have two choices for disk storage, unmanaged and managed disks. Unmanaged disks are stored as page blobs in your storage account. The cost for page blobs depends upon the amount of page blob storage used, IOPS per page blob, throughput per page blob, and on the type of disk, premium SSD or standard HDD. Another easy way to reduce Azure storage costs is to delete any unused, unattached disks that remain in storage. 
It's important to realize that when a virtual machine is deleted, any disks that were attached to that virtual machine are not deleted. You will still incur charges for these orphan disks that remain in your storage account. Moreover, discharges are based on the allocated size of the disk and not the amount used. For example, if you allocated a 128 gigabyte premium disk, the charge is based on 128 gigabytes, even though it may only contain 50 gigabytes of data. Deleting these unattached disks can significantly reduce your storage costs, particularly storage accounts used for development and testing, where virtual machines are frequently created and deleted. The first identity cost to consider is Azure Active Directory. Azure AD comes in four editions, free, basic, premium P1, and premium P2. The free edition is generally not suited for most businesses since it lacks self-service password capabilities, multi-factor authentication, device objects, and two-way synchronization between on-premises AD and Azure AD, just to name a few of the features. As its name implies, this version is free, but it has a limit of 500,000 objects and 10 applications per user and does not qualify for Microsoft's SLA. The basic edition is similar to the free edition, having the same features, but there is no object limit, and it includes self-server password reset, application proxy, group-based access management and provision, and does qualify for Microsoft's SLA. The cost for the basic edition is $1 per month per user. The premium P1 edition is fairly full-featured, lacking only identity protection, privileged identity management, and access reviews, which are features available in the premium P2 edition. The premium P1 edition is $6 per month per user, and the premium P2 edition is $9 per month per user. By determining which Azure AD features your organization is currently using and or planning on using, you can make a cost-effective choice when choosing an Azure AD edition. One way to realize cost savings with regards to Azure Active Directory is by entering into an enterprise agreement with Microsoft if your organization is not already doing so. In order to qualify for an enterprise agreement, however, your organization should have at least 500 devices and desire to license software and cloud services for a minimum of three years. You can always add or remove products and services over time through Microsoft's annual true-up process. Reducing application deployment costs begins with determining whether your specific deployment requires that you have access to the operating system. If so, Azure Cloud Services provides that level of access. Otherwise, the preferred method is by using Azure App Services. With either service offering, it's important to choose the right plan based on the demands of the workload deployed. Also, deploy all of your production web apps into a single plan and deploy your development environment into another plan. And in many cases, the production and development deployments are best deployed in separate Azure accounts. And then you can delete the development resources when no longer needed. For cloud service deployments, remember that there are charges incurred for your resources deployed to any and all staging slots.